Hi and welcome to the, to the 2018 Paper 2 for the Levisar Audio Level. Uh, this is uh, Section E and it's the second question of that paper. So as usual I suggest you stop and pause at the different parts of this question. Now, there are four parts, A, B, C and D, and just give the question a go. And if you want to get the set notes I'm working off, where I have the, the screen grab of the, of the paper and the question and the answer on the next page, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. The email address is in the description below. So let's get stuck in. So question two here says the points, you given points P at seven of the X, 10 in the Y, Q, one of the X, two in the Y, and then R, which is 11 of the X, four in the Y, are the vertices, the corners of the triangle shown. So you have your P, your Q, and your R up here. Now it says the points U, four of the X, six in the Y, is the midpoint of PQ. So what's going on here? Going on here? That's PQ. That's the U term or point there. That's the midpoint of those two points. Okay, and the point V, so the point here, is the midpoint of PR. That's P and R there. Okay. Now, Paré says, find the coordinates of V. Now, if we read it from the question, V is the midpoint of PR. So we're concerned with, well, basically find the midpoint of PR. So as always, okay, you should go find your formula. Now, it's in the mass tables, and you may know it already. Okay, but it's in the mass tables. And we write out, okay. Now, what I've done here is I've labeled the points in the question, okay? you probably better off doing is taking those two points and writing them down here on the side and labeling them. I've labeled them first x value, first y value, x1, y1. Second x value, second y value, x2, y2. And then I just, all I'm going to do is substitution. I'm going to put the number where the letter is, okay? So instead of x1, I put 7, like I've labeled. Instead of x2, I put 11. Instead of y1, I put 10 instead of y2, I put 4. No need for brackets around the inputs because they're all positive. Um, so our next step now, now we're actually going to start doing some math. Okay, i got to do a little sum here, addition and addition, just to simplify. That's all I can do. Remember, this is not an equation. No change in signs, moving things across, you know, no, no, basically no algebra. This is just arithmetic. So 7, 11 is 18. Okay, I'll do the division by 2 in a second. 10 of 4 is 14. Again, I'll do the division um, by 2 in a second. So we're basically at the answer. Okay, can this be simplified? 2 into 18 does go 9 times. Okay, 2 into 14 goes 7 times. So my answer is 9, 7. Okay, job done. That's part A. Now part B here says, now I've actually just, just for the clarity of the work, I've screen taken the, the, the points as well. But this part B here is the question. Show by using slopes that UV is parallel to QR. Okay, if I flick back to the diagram here, okay, you're showing that UV, this line here, is it parallel to QR? Now it sure looks like it, okay, but these diagrams are not always to scale, so maybe it isn't. Okay, so the only way to prove it is by finding their slopes. If they're equal, well then they're parallel. If they're not equal, they're not parallel. So to do that, we need to find the slope of the two lines. Now that's the slope formula screen printed from the math tables, okay. And uh, I'll go straight to the answer because it's done out. Now it looks like it's lo there's a lot of work here, but I'm being very, in one sense, pedantic, long-winded about it. I'm writing out my point U, my point V. I'm labeling them, okay, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. It doesn't matter which you call X1, Y1, you know, if, if I swap them around, I would get the same answer, okay. So I write out my formula, again, I got that from the math tables, and now I do the substitution. Okay, so instead of y2, I put the 7 that's there. That's, instead of the y1, I put the 6. Now, they've been taken away, but we'll, we'll worry about that in a minute. The x2 is 9, that's down here, and the x1 is 4, down here. Now, all the numbers I'm dealing with are positive, so um, there's no, you know, if you were dealing with negatives, just got to be a little bit more careful that there might be a sign change, minus by a minus, okay, changing that to a plus. But anyway, I'm now starting the maths as such, so I'm going to do the simplification, top then bottom. 7 take away 6 is 1, 9 take away 4 is 5. Now, I could divide it in and get 0.2, but there's no need to. I'm just, I, don't, I want to know if the slope of UV is the same thing as um, um, a Q, sorry, PR, okay? Now, I've realized I've a mistake here. Let's just fix this. I apologize about that. Okay, I just fixed this. In my editing or whatever, I redid it, I just copy and paste it. Uh, this is the point Q and the point R. Again, I've labeled them uh, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Okay. 
okay and something into the formula okay so it's all the same here as the last time and the y2 value is four the y1 value is two the x2 value is 11 and the x1 value is one now we'll go top to bottom uh, left then to right four take away two is two 11 take away one is 10 now two over 10 will simplify to be will give you one fifth so basically the conclusion is um is the slope of uv equal to the slope of qr okay yes okay i can say that by using the parallel lines here mathematical language uv is parallel to qr or i could just state this to the two slopes they all should be acceptable okay now part b then so next thing is part c here it says find the area of the triangle pqr now it's not a right angle triangle so we can't use a half base by height and find distances and stuff um we couldn't use a half a b sine c we have to find an angle the most appropriate formula here would be the formula for uh quarter geometry the area of a triangle in quarter geometry as such now the trick with this and i can't say this enough you need to have two vertices of the triangle but they those vertices will change because one of the vertices of that triangle has to be sitting on zero zero if one part of the triangle moves okay so you're trying to find a triangle here like that Okay, this formula will only work if you translate one of the corners, and I'm going to take, maybe you should see this one, and translate that to zero, zero. But if that translates, so do the other two points here. So we need to find out what these, these new coordinates here are. Okay, if we find out what they are, we can use them in the formula, and we'll get the correct answer. What a lot of people do is, and did from when I marked the exam, they just use two of the vertices in this formula, and they, they, they couldn't get full marks. Anyway, let's go through it. So that's your formula written out here. Okay, I've taken, um, now these two points are found by translating. So I took P and translated to the origin. It went down seven on the X, seven X units, and then 10 Y units. So the other two points, Q and R, will move the same. Okay, and I end up with these two new coordinates, minus six, minus eight, and four, minus six. I've written them here and I've labeled them. First X value, first Y value, second X value, second Y value. And they put them in their place. Now you notice here I put things in in brackets because they're negatives. Okay. Now the formula here doesn't make it very explicit, but it's x1 times y2. I've made it more explicit here by using the brackets. And I just filled in. So instead of x1, I've put minus 6. Instead of x2, I've put, sorry, y2, I've put minus 6. That's there. Instead of x2, I put the 4. Instead of y1, I've put the minus 8. So I've everything filled in. It's going to move that. Now, you can't really put it to the calculator, okay? You're going to need to watch these bars. These bars in this context means the absolute value. So whatever in here gets turned uh, positive. Now, it doesn't affect this question as far as I know. No, it doesn't. Okay, so we go left to right inside those uh, bars. Minus 6 by minus 6 is plus 36. Now, you're taking away 4 times, or basically multiplying minus by 4 is minus 4. Minus 4 times minus 8 is plus 32. I'm going to add that little sum there. So it's a half times 36 plus 32 is 68. A half of 68 is 34. Now, a lot of people in this uh, user exam forgot to put units in. Okay, it's very, very important. Even if you're not sure you should, you definitely should. Okay, just always put your units in. Okay, there are times you don't actually need them because they're mentioned in the question, but just don't take the chance. So that's part C. Now, part D here says the point S is the image of the point Q under the translation UV. So S is the new point. So Q is translating to S, and it's moving the same distance as U moves to V. So you have to get the head on that. Okay, well, if you kind of draw it out, you'll, you'll, it'll, you know, with the points, it makes sense. Um, but I have U traveling as far as V. Now it moves up five, plus five on the X, plus one on the Y. For that movement to happen so q is moving the exact same distance it's moving five up in the x one up in the y so you end up at the point six three and that's the point s okay right so i think that's question yeah that's question two finished so let's look and see you on question three thank you